In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you one of my favorite defenses to stop the gun bunch in Madden 21. What's up guys, my name is Cody and I want to thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. Now if you're new to the channel and you have not subscribed yet, it's completely free to do that and my channel is all about becoming a better Madden player in Madden 21. And so every day on YouTube, I share with you things that I'm learning that has helped me become a better player. We share defensive schemes, offensive schemes, zone defenses, man defenses, blitz beaters, man beaters, bombs, cover four quarters, all of that stuff. So if you want to get all of the latest schemes go ahead and hit the subscribe button at the bottom right hand corner of your screen. I also wanted to highlight really quickly my text message membership. If you don't know what that is, it's a completely free thing that I do for my community here on YouTube. And all it is, is all you have to do is text me. My phone number will be in the top left hand corner of your screen. It's also in the description of this video. And just text me and every single week I release a brand new video um, that is essentially a full scheme. So for example, in the past we've done one hour breakdowns on the gun bunch, the nickel 335 wide, which we're going to talk a little bit about today, the big nickel over G, as well as several other uh, popular formations like the U trips and the trips tied in and I can go on and on but there's 15 full schemes in that text message membership for you guys so if you want to get that for free you get all the videos all you have to do is just text me I only allow that to be shown to my text message uh, membership okay <clears throat> so today we are taking a look at some things out of the gun bunch and I'm in the Seattle playbook I think Seattle has the best gun bunch and I want to share with you kind of a unique, almost, um, it's almost like a cover, I call it a cover two quarters type of defense. But really the way that it works is it kind of mixes in a little bit of everything that you can do defensively. It mixes in some match coverage, it mixes in some man coverage, it mixes in some zone drops. Um, all from a cover four shell, uh, which is really, really cool. So, uh, anyways, I want to show you first and foremost my auto or my coaching adjustments. And what my coaching adjustments are is I have auto flip on, auto alignment to default, ball or defense to play ball, option defense on conservative. And then as you can see here, I have my flats on 30 yards, my curl flats on 10, and my hooks on 5. Okay. So that's what, those are the zone drops that I work with. You can obviously adjust them based on the situation, but I want you to see this defense. So um, I'm going to be audibling from the 3 through 5 normal down to the 3 through 5 wide, cover 4, show 2. That, to me, is the best way to play this year. And you have access to pretty much everything you need in a 3 through 5 wide style of defense. So what we're going to be taking a look at here is I'm going to go right into the cover 4 drop, and I'm going to audible down to that cover 4, show 2. Now, if you can look at what I have on the field, I have these quarter flats, and then I have two or I have four deep quarter zones, right? Four quarters of the field. And I want to talk about the field, um, the way that I kind of break it down. And again, this is just Cody. I don't know if there's any real NFL strategy to this. But if I think of cover four quarters, I almost think about it. And the ball, especially, a lot of times the ball is going to be on a hash mark, right? So, um, Essentially, the field, if you could divide it into four quadrants, what I kind of do is I divide it into the left side numbers, the left side hash marks, the right side hash marks, and the right side numbers. So if you look at like where, um, if you look at where this guy is defending here, he is in what I would call the left side numbers, as you can see. Then you have the left side hash mark, which as you can see right here, um, is right here. So really this inside quarter, um, if you're being completely honest about how bunch tied in or bunch works, doesn't really have a responsibility. Um, it, it really doesn't, it, it, he doesn't need to be here, okay? Um, because this, this you don't need two people because they, they're on the left hash mark. You only need one per, um, per field measurement in my mind. So what I mean by that is if the ball was in the middle of the field, then you might need four. Right, because you would have the left hash, you'd have the left numbers, you'd have the right hash, you'd have the right numbers. But most of the time, the ball is going to be on a hash mark. So really, and 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 to kind of further this, you see Jackson here. He's on the right side hash mark. Now, if I mo if I move um, him over here, you see now he's in the right side numbers. There's a lot of field over here that they can attack. Whereas on this side of the field, that's not really the case. Okay, that's not really the case. So you don't really need somebody for this left side. Um, for this left side, right? You just need somebody for the right side. So what I want to show you is just a little bit of a thing that you can see. So from bunch, um, all I'm going to do is I'm going to put the outside guy, Nickerson, into a cloud flat. And I just want you to watch what happens here. 
Um, and this is a little bit of a, a, a kind of an advanced guide to these quarters. Uh, and I just want you to see. So I'm just going to put a streak out there and a fade. And I want you to watch what happens. You see that the deep blue zone does it. He kind of goes to guard him at first. But then he jumps down to the post route to the tight end. Okay, this is very common. In fact, if I um, if I take the post route to Tunyon and I smart route him and maybe do like a four vertical style of, of attack, you're going to notice that again based on the quarter. And, and I want you to think about this in terms of quarters coverage. So quarters being these marks on the field, the numbers, the hash marks, left side numbers, left side hash mark right side hash mark, right side numbers. That's kind of the way I want you to think about it. For every hash mark that you're in, or more importantly, for every hash mark that a receiver is in, I think that means um, that you should have a quarter there. So if you think a look at this again, um, I'm going to put Nickerson on a cloud flat one more time. Um, let me see here real quick. Make that adjustment. So we're going to put him onto a cloud flat. Okay. So he's on a cloud flat that is at 30 yards. And I just want you to watch. Again, this is the same route combination. And it should be exactly the same, essentially. You'll see here he does. He goes that direction. And as you can see, Valdez Scantling is open. But remember what I was suggesting about the hash mark situation. For every, every spot there is a receiver threat, to me, you need someone in that zone to stop them. If there's not a receiving threat in that area of the field, there doesn't make a lot of sense to me to have a zone there. So a, another adjustment that one could argue from this is if you take a look on the left side, um, there's no receiving threat in the outside. You see here, there's literally no receiving threat. So circle cannot go, like he can't go out to the numbers. He's not, he's not able to get there. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to put Alexander into a cloud flat. Okay. Now what I want you to do is I want you to watch the same exact play. And we're just going to put three verticals here with that same four vertical concept. But I want you to watch what happens on the right side. You'll see that R1 splits them based off of his quarter. Let me go into instant replay and kind of explain this. This is, I think, a big deal. And you can use this. This is in my 3-3-5 wide defensive guide. No understanding how coverages works, I think, is so much more important than just understanding blitzes. And one of the things I'm trying to do better about for you guys is teaching more of how these coverages can work for you. So if you take a look here, and again, when I say no, nope, when I say this, look, this is right side numbers over here. This is right side hash mark. Whoops, right ha hash mark. Right side uh, or left side hash mark right there, and then left side numbers. So now I want you to watch the routes. Okay, watch this route right here. This is the guy that can get outside, and I just want you to watch. See how the quarter is going to naturally split both of them. He can't just throw it a 1-1. Whichever one the quarterback chooses to throw to, that's, guy, that's where he's going to go. So let's talk about kind of the obvious thing that you could see uh, from this defense. And this is where I come back to say, I think it actually applies to where they start, not where they finish. So, um, for example, if I do this combination, but now I'm going to motion Austin out, then I just want you to watch what happens. Snap of the ball, I drop back, and as you see here, he's open for a touchdown. So it's the same, it's really the same idea, but the question, the question is, Sometimes with the way that quarter zones work, there are some adjustments that you can do that will significantly help this. So, for example, um, let me show you what I'm talking about. So, let's say that I did something like this. So, I call that cover two to the bunch side, and then maybe I take Redman and I can man him up on somebody, right? So, in this example, I'm going to man him up onto the circle receiver, okay? Just, just for example, okay? And I want you to watch how this plays now that I do that adjustment. So I motion this guy out, just like last time. And now you see the man coverage follows him all the way up and down the field, and that route is completely taken away. Another thing that I wanted to hit really quickly is, number one, this is not a popular thing. Like, you're not going to see a lot of people run that route combination unless they obviously understand what you're doing. But now I want to try the same thing with R1. So let's see if I can man up R1, and I want to see and show 
that this how this adjustment plays within this defense. So again, I'm going to man up R1 now. And the same exact combination on this example, circle should be open. But you see that because R1 is manned up, now you see that right there? Because R1 is manned up, the inside quarter knows to go to the outside receiver. I want to show you this in instant replay. It's completely different than what um, it's completely different than what um, would happen before. With the man coverage being the only adjustment, you see here how it can change the exact whole, whole defense. Because if you watch. Watch this right here. He's going with him at the seam. And look at the inside quarter. He automatically goes to the outside until I throw it back. And he's close enough that he can come back and make a play. So this is kind of an interesting theory um, or, or really interesting, interesting discovery. Because really what Bunch does a lot is they do stuff like this right here. They're, they want to run flood, right? They want to run um, Z spot and go. Right, they want to. This is the combination you want. They want to. Run. They don't necessarily want to run something like this, because this is not sound for them. The reason I bring that up is because I think that this defense can actually be very powerful for a lot of things that bunch players like to do. If you think about what bunch players like to do, the slot receiver is kind of the primary receiver in a lot of the routes, meaning um, the corner route. The flood route, the you know the the the, the corner strike, right? Um, it's it's one of those two receivers, and so as long as you man up whoever that is based off tendency. So for example, if they're running a lot of flood, okay, if they're running a lot of flood, I want you to see how this this um, this defense plays against flood. So uh, real quick here, all I'm going to do is I'm going to Basically, again, wherever there's a deep threat, wherever I can get burned deep, I've got to take care of that. So uh, I'm going to man up onto circle here, uh, or I'm sorry, I'm going to man up onto R1 here. I'm going to throw two. I like to throw seam flats instead of quarter flats. I think they play a little bit better. And then I might throw like a three wreck from the defensive line, right, if I wanted to. Okay, I don't, I don't have to. And I just want you to watch how this defends the play flood. So here's flood, and I want you to watch. They sit kind of right in the area that they're going to throw to. And as you can see, it's a pick. So that takes Flood away. Now I want to show you a different route combination um, that they will possibly use. More so from the Carolina bunch um, than from this bunch. Uh, and again, when I play in some, when I use quarters, I like to bring them down and make them a little bit more aggressive. Now, one thing that we talk, we haven't even talked about is the left side yet, and we'll get to that in just a second. But I have something for the left side that I think you're going to really like. Um, but anyways, if you take a look at this mesh post, now, um, now this would be an example where they're manned up on the wrong guy. See, so he's manned up on R1, and now that leaves that open. But that inside quarter does kind of play it. A little bit um, and if this was the play double post from the Carolina bunch that inside quarter would play it you know pretty much lights out but now what I want to do is I want to show you what happens whenever you man up the circle player because he's going to now have inside leverage on mesh post so if I run mesh post you'll see again now he's in man coverage and now you got a lot tighter of a throw Obviously, your user is going to be in the middle of the field as well. You're going to have a lot of things that are going to be factors within this play. The last thing I wanted to talk about today is I want to talk about a little bit about the left side of the bunch. So um, a couple of things that you have to think about. Again, it comes back to where are the threats, in my opinion. When you're, dealing, when you're building a cover four style of a defense that you want to adjust out of, you have to understand where the threats are. So for example... If I take R1, and I just want you to think about this for a second here. Um, I just want you to, I just want to show you this as an example. So let's say I take R1, okay? And let's say that I want to run the play, oh, let's just say for sake of an example here, flood. Um, not flood. That's not a good example. Let's use bench pivot, okay? And on the left side, I'm going to run a four verticals concept. So I'm going to have two verticals going to the left side. And then on the right side, I'm going to have a, a vertical and a corner route, right? I'm not saying this would be what somebody would do. This is just for an example. If you watch this left side, there's no deep middle zone, right? There's no deep middle zone. So I just want you to watch R1. 
you're going to see that that safety is going to split him and there's and then that man coverage is coming from an inside leverage position. I always have a rule of thumb whenever I'm defending gun bunch or troops tied in that whoever they motion over, I will almost always cross man him. Almost always. And the reason why is because one of the most popular things that people like to do to be able to beat man to man coverage consistently is they like to use motion slants. That's one of the most obvious things that people are going to do. So you're going to see this route combo. This is one of my favorite personal route combos. And you see right here that that man coverage doesn't always stop it, but it does do a decent job. So when it comes back to the gun bunch for just a moment here, um, I want to talk about the left side. And really what it comes back to is receiver threats. Where are the receiving threats? There is no receiving threat. Okay, if you think about this, there's no receiving threat that can go vertical in the left side slot. And in fact, if Jones was in the left side slot, all of a sudden this defense changes. But because of the spacing of the bunch, and really because of the hash mark even, you don't have to take away both hash marks. You just have to take away one because you only have one quadrant of the field that you have to cover. So that's why if there's a deep half out there, he'll cover both. You see that? I pass it inside and King is able to get back on that ball. So what I want to talk about today is this principle that I really believe in that you could literally run cover two to the short side and cover four quarters to the wide side. And then based off of their alignment and based off of where they could actually go from a route perspective, you can actually take away some of those over the top zones and get them to play underneath on things like crossing routes, post routes, slant routes, drag routes, all of those things. So... To kind of wrap this up a little bit, this is kind of my favorite bunch defense in the game. What I like to do is I like to take this slot right here, and I like to man him up. If they're if they're running a lot of flood, normally he's going to get manned up on Devontae Adams, normally. Um, but what I like to do when I do that is I like to shade coverage, um, shade coverage outside and shade coverage over top. And then I like to, because that's going to tell the outside quarters to shade in a specific way. And then what I'd like to do is I like to go ahead and repurple both of these guys. I think it plays a lot better when you do that. And then as you'll see right here, you're going to see this, this kind of setup right here. This is my favorite way to stop Gun Bunch in the game. Uh, and the reason why I like it so much is because I think it is really, really difficult to consistently move against this. You, you have the underneath. Yes. Do you have like a quick flat route? Yeah, you do. But that's all you have. And if we wanted to take that away in a key situation, we could. But you're going to see here this defense right here. I put two. Uh, I put a. I put them in soft squats. You don't have to do that. You can put them in cloud flats if you wanted to. I like to put them in soft squats. And then I take the left side guy and I put him into a deep half. And now it's really kind of a cover two quarter almost right um it's almost it's almost like a cover f uh cover five or something but um as you can see it doesn't if they run vertical and that's really the only thing you have to worry about like to play verticals from bunch um if they run vertical you're still going to be fine and obviously if they run vertical you're going to take the tight end and as you can see the entire defense takes care of everything that they want to do the beauty of this is if they run flood, if they run mesh post, if they run curl flat corner, let me show you bench. Let me show you. Um, you're probably sitting here thinking, well, if they run Z spot and go, they're going to have a wide open dot. Um, not quite the case because, and this is why we set those uh, those flat zones to 30 um, as opposed to 25 when we run this defense. Uh, you'll find that 30 does a little bit better of a job. And so again, we're going to set that coverage up. And again, if they're in the middle of the field, it's completely different. You don't want to. This hash right here changes everything. So you, if they're in the middle of the field, you might not want to have this guy in a deep half. You might want to play traditional cover four. Most of the time when you play bunch, though, you're going to be on a hash mark. I almost guarantee you that you're going to be on a hash mark about 90% of the time whenever you play uh, whenever you play gun bunch. So because of that, that is what's kind of, um, you know, that's what's kind of, you know, giving us some insight as far as how we're going to defend this. But again, here's your adjustments. As you can see, it's a cover five. It's what I call it. I don't know if it actually is that. But I want you to watch this corner route. There is no way he can throw that. No way at all. 
right? And that's with route tech, and that's on a bad corner. So um, my point is, this defense right here takes away a lot of the things that gun bunch users like to use. It's one of my favorite new defenses that I've been working on. I think it has a lot of. Uh, I think it has a lot of potential. I'm not. I've I've kind of seen concepts from this from Zan from from Dues Close, but I haven't seen it necessarily applied to bunch like this. And I think that you're going to find that if you apply this to the gun bunch. You're going to have a lot of success. So I want to thank you for watching this video. You can mix this defense in with everything else that we've teach, teached you or taught you into our 335Y defensive ebook. If you want to get the full defensive guide that shows you everything that you need to know from 335 wide and how to run it effectively against the pass, against the run, against pretty much anything that they have to offer, that link is in the description. And I haven't even talked too much about our free sample of that ebook. If you want to get a free sample of that ebook, I have a one hour video that is literally a free sample that kind of walks you through some of the foundational principles um, that the defense was built on shows you how to stop the run from every formation uh, in the game and that video is available via our text message membership all you got to do to get that video is simply text me my phone number is 812-216-3644 i want to thank you for your time and i hope you enjoyed the video and we will see you on our stream tonight at 10 p.m eastern time